Get ready for that. Don't miss out. Mark your calendar now. You say, oh, I have made plans. Well, adjust your plans. Because how many of us know God's called us to make an impact within our city? Amen. And then we're going to cap it off with Pastor Sandy Jr. Elder Pastor Sandy Jr. is going to be with us Sunday all day. So it's going to be a power-packed weekend next week. So mark your calendar, make arrangements, and let's be ready to impact our city. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, are you ready for the word this morning? Come on, are you ready for the word this morning? Today, I believe I have a word that is going to stir your heart today. Because as we are in the middle of the year, just like Pastor Vic had mentioned, how many of us know that if there's a time where we should step up, it's actually right in the middle. Because sometimes right in the middle is where we can either slow down, get fatigued, get a little tired. But how many of us know right in the middle is where we need to step up and step over. Amen? So I, I, I believe this morning this word is going to minister to your heart. Ephesians 3.20 reads like this. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Catch that. According to to the power that works in us. Everybody say power. power. Say it like you got it. Say power. power. According to the power that works in us. Let's pray. Father, this morning we come before you. And Lord, we just thank you for your beautiful presence that we sense here this morning. Lord, we just ask that you would be with us. Lord, that you would speak to our hearts. Continue to challenge our lives, oh God. That we would be the church and the people that you've called us to be. So, Lord, we give this service over to you. We give this entire day over to you. We just ask that you would have your way within our lives. We thank you now. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says? Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, ask your neighbor, do you have a breakthrough spirit? You may be seated. Today, I want to take a few moments to talk to you about having a breakthrough spirit, a breakthrough spirit. But how many of us know before we can have a breakthrough spirit, we've got to be able to be a breakout people. We've got to be able to be a breakout people. And here in Ephesians 3.20, Paul was writing to the Ephesians, and he was telling them that to go to the next level, they can't get comfortable where they're at. Because here... A lot of great things were happening and took in place. And there was things that were they were experiencing. And they had experienced breakthrough and great things. But sometimes when you experience break, uh, breakthrough and great things, sometimes we could get satisfied or even settle. But how many of us know God has not called us to get satisfied or settle? Because normally when we get satisfied or we begin to settle, we begin to stop moving the way God has called us to move. And then eventually, normally, what happens after that is that things begin to pass us by. And then all of a sudden, it begins to do something inside of us emotionally, right? You ever, you ever been in that winning season where you're just moving and you're passing people up and you're passing things up? And it's not a negative thing or a bad thing, but you just feel good, right? Come on, somebody. Anybody feel good this morning? Or somebody passing you up this morning. See, when you're, when you're moving forward and God is doing something in your life, you're feeling good and you're feeling great. And it's not necessarily a bad thing or a pride thing. It's just that you're grateful for what God has done in your life and you're grateful for what he's doing and you're grateful for how he's elevating your life. But the moment things start passing you up, you begin to say, man, what's going on here? And, and why do I feel this way? Maybe it's the question that, we need to ask ourselves, have I settled or have I gotten satisfied? Because those things can be dangerous areas in a life of a Christian. And see, before you can step out and break through, we must first be a people that will have to learn to break out. See, because a breakthrough spirit produces a breakthrough spirit. Breakthrough produces breakthrough. And I don't know about you, but I've experienced breakthrough. How many of you ever experienced breakthrough? Come on, how many of you experienced breakthrough? <laughs> See, I kind of have a feeling that maybe some of you forgot. How about the day you got saved? 
Come on, how about the day that Jesus came into your life? Remember, you were messed up. You were hooked on drugs. You were all messed up. But then the moment Jesus came into your life, you experienced breakthrough. And then from that breakthrough, you experience another breakthrough. And from that breakthrough, you experience another breakthrough. But the question I think we need to ask ourselves, are we tired of experiencing breakthrough? See, because there is a lot of energy when it comes to having breakthrough. See, because when you have a breakthrough, you're energetic, you're excited, you're feeling good, and you want to do something for God. It doesn't matter what it costs you. It doesn't matter how much work it's going to take. All that matters is is that you enjoy the experience of having a breakthrough. But I believe that there are some things that we need to take a look at here this morning. See, breakout, breaking out of our mentality, if we break out of our mentality, it begins to take off the limits of how we believe. And understand God is way bigger than what we think. Because many times we... We, 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 put, we put God in the box. We, we put God in the box saying that, you know, oh, that, I can't do that or that's not for me. Well, I got news for you. God is able to do it in your life. God is able to do great things within your life. And God is able to do things that you thought will never, ever happen within your life. I like what Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9 says. It reads like this. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Catch that. Nor your ways are are my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. You got to give the Lord some praise right there because we serve a big God. We serve a good God. We serve an all-powerful God. And when I read this scripture, I can't help but to think about new levels because of the power that we have access to. What did Ephesians uh, 3.20 says? The power. The power. Anybody got any power this morning? Come on, anybody got any power this morning? I woke up feeling good today. I woke up feeling ready today. I I woke up this morning ready to do what God has called me to do. I feel good spiritually. I feel good physically. I am ready to answer the call of God upon my life. Why? Because God has anointed us. God is raising up a ministry. God is raising up a church to make an impact within our city. And when I read these scriptures, I I can't think about, I can't help but to think about new levels. New levels, next levels. And I believe God wants us to go to new levels, the next level within our lives. Because it's not just for the church and the ministry, but it's for your life, it's for your marriage, it's for your family, it's for your children. And whenever God wants to expand something within our lives, that means he's going to take us to new levels. God's going to expand this sanctuary. God's going to expand our ministry. So understand this, if he's going to expand that, he's going he's to need some expanding people. He's going to need some people that are willing to expand. And that means it's going to either restore or bring something new. That means he's going to either restore or bring something something new. I think some of you missed that right there because some of you need some new things within your life. Some of you need a freshness within your life. Some of you need something to be restored within your life. Well, I got news for you. It's on its way. There's going to be restoring. There's going to be some new things within your life. See, in order for us to experience breakthrough, We should know the areas God wants us to break out of. We should know the areas that God wants us to break out. Now, why do we need to break out of things? Because breakthrough people have a great responsibility in the house of God, especially here in VOSD. So this morning, I want to give you three areas that we need to break out into. How many of you are ready for it? How many of you are ready to break out? Come on, how many of you are ready to break out? So the first area is this. Breakthrough people know how to break out from lids. Say lids. Everybody say lids. Because every one of us have them. Every one of us have lids within our lives. Breakthrough people know how to break lids within their lives. And as we move forward, I believe that there are going to be some people that you're just kind of feeling right now that there are just some things that are just kind of holding you back and Holding you down. 
And my prayer that after this message this morning, you're going to learn how to break through. You're going to get off me. You know, stop holding me back because God has a plan and a purpose for my life. See, lids must be broken from our lives. Paul says to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. So what does that mean? We, that means God is all powerful. If God is the God that saved you, because remember back in the day, they said you would never amount to anything. Remember what the, those, 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 those city officials or maybe even your parole officer, they didn't believe in you. They, they, they said you're going to always be this way because they've seen it time and time and time again. But the moment Jesus stepped in the scene and the moment God came in and changed and transformed your life, look at you today. I'll say it again. Look at you today. Some of you probably need to take another selfie of yourself. To look at how good you are. To look at where you came from. Remember the self you used to take back in the day? It was a mugshot. But look at the one that you're taking today. And that's only because of Jesus Christ within your life. See, we at times limit God by the way we think. See, whenever lids are broken in our lives, we stop looking at uh, we. We, 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 we stop looking at what can't be done, but we start looking at what can be done. See, when lids are broken within our lives, you know, we, we, don't, we don't stay looking at what can't be done. We start looking at what can be done. And I don't know about you, but, man, we've come a mighty long ways. Even if you just look at your life for just a moment, you've come a mighty long ways. I think the Lord should get some praise for that. You've come a mighty long ways. And when those lids are broken, we don't focus on what we can't do. We focus on what we can do. And I believe that that's the spirit we need as we move forward. We look at what we can do through Jesus Christ. And it means, what does that mean? Is that God wants to bring expansion to our lives. Bring expansion to our lives. Breaking through lids. You know what that means? You know what that tells me? Is that we got to begin to make room. Say make room. Because... When we make room, that means we're seeing different. When you make room and you begin to break lids within your life, that means you're seeing things at a whole nother level. If you're not making room, it's probably because you're seeing things at a whole negative way. But when lids are broken within your life, you're not looking at the past, but you're looking to the future. You're looking to expansion. You're looking to grow. You're looking to be at the next level that God wants you to be at. So the question I have for you this morning is, what are you doing to make room? Because God's word says that he has an abundant life for us. Abundant life. Not a minimal life, not a small life, but a life of abundance. Catch that this morning. A life of abundance. So what does that mean? That God wants to pour some things within our lives. God wants to raise us up personally. God wants to bless your family. God wants to bless your ministry. God wants to bless everything about your life. See, we have to be committed to going. Everybody say going. Say it like you're going to do it. Say going. You may say, where are we going? You know where we need to go? We need to go deeper with God. Maybe that's why sometimes we struggle. It's because we don't go deep with God. I don't know about you, but when, 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 when I go deep with God, then there's no limits to what God, what I can do for God. And there is more power to tap into. See, you, you think just getting saved or you think just serving in the ministry for a few years, few years that that's all the power I need. Well, I came to let you know there is more power to tap into. There is more anointing to tap into. There is more power that God wants to pour into our lives. See, God wants to grow us and expand our territory. He wants us to make room for him so that our lives can be the light to this hurting and dying world. See, I don't know about you, but I want to be a man who is constantly preparing myself, making room, expanding to be who I'm called to be, to be able to pursue the promises of God for my life. How many of you desire the promises of God for your life? 
Come on, how many of you desire the promises of God for your life? But here's the thing. Don't expect God to give you the promises if you ain't ready for it. Don't expect God to give you the promises if you ain't ready for it. And that's the challenge we face today. We want the promises now, but we can't have it until we learn to have breakthrough. See, because if you don't have that breakthrough, you're not going to be able to receive what God has for your life. See, because at this next level, and as we begin to step into new breakthroughs, how many of us know we can't walk with a defeated spirit? We've got to walk with a victorious spirit. We are leading in the city. We are leading people. And I don't know about you, but man, there is no victory in leading in defeat. So when we lead, we've got to lead in victory. We've got to lead in joy. We've got to lead in energy and excitement. We've got to be able to be those leaders, that church that is excited about what God is doing within our lives. See, some of you are struggling with this message this morning. Maybe it's because of what you're having to grow through. Not go through, but grow through. Because we are in a season of growth. We are in a season of development. We are in a season of building. And every time that we are in a season of building, a season of growth, sometimes there is stretching that is involved. And there is, there's a chiseling that is involved. There is shaving that is involved. There is sanding that is involved. And we don't like that. Oh, but if we would receive that. And if we would allow the chiseling and, the, and, and, and all those things chipped off of our lives, man, you'll feel a whole lot lighter. You'll feel a whole lot better. You'll be walking with victory and shouting glory unto God. But I get it. I know some of you can't do it right now because God is working on you. God is expanding you. God is stretching you. God is building you. But just know this. It's all because he's getting ready to take you to another level. It's all because God is getting ready to expand you. He's just getting ready to do something powerful within your life. See, the heaviest lid to break through is the lid of growth. Is the lid of growth. See, breakthrough people are growing people. Breakthrough people are growing people. And maybe it's time again that we've got to come down off the ladder. You know, because in life, in ministry, see, we've learned how to climb up the ladder. And up on top of the ladder is a, is a, is a good place because you can see everything. And you, you've gone up. But sometimes we don't like to come back down the ladder because coming back down the ladder means you've got to carry something else back up. And sometimes as we begin to get mature spiritually, sometimes as we begin to get mature physically and in and, and age, Sometimes we don't like to do those things again. And I, and, and I feel you because I, I, I'm getting mature. I, I'm getting a little older. And I, I don't know, you know, me and pa, you know, Pastor says it too, you know, we're getting older. And some people say, you guys are not old. But the reality of it is, is we, we are, we're maturing. You guys are too. My, my kids, we were, we've, I've been talking about it lately. So, you know, my kids are older than some of the young adults in the church, most of the young adults in the church. And then I begin to think, and I start going through all these head trips, <laughs> getting old. Then they start thinking, they're getting old. But the out reality of it is, is when you get older, you don't feel like doing certain things no more. Yeah. Right? You don't feel like hanging out all night long no more. <laughs> right? You want to be under the covers at 9 p.m.? Come on, somebody. You, you know, you don't feel like doing certain things no more. You know, those things, you know, they, they don't interest you no more. And so you start making changes. But what about spiritually? Right? When you start getting to a certain place, you don't want to do certain things no more. How about like serving? Come on, somebody. How about like discipling again? How about like getting that newcomer and bringing them alongside and having to put up with some things they don't know? Right? And then all of a sudden it begins to challenge you because you start saying, man, can't you just get it together? Can't you just do it the way that I do it? 
Oh, but how we forget how we work. How we forget how we struggle. And how we forget how long it took us. See, when you get to a certain level, you don't want to do some of those things no more. But I came to let you know if there's ever expansion that's going to take place within our church, within our leadership, and within our lives, we are going to have to go back to the basics, come back down the ladder, and begin to get a hold of those things and start doing them all over again. You know, a lot of times we, 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 we get into a place where we want to change physically. And, I've, and I, you know, we, we, there's many of us that have been in the, in the gym lately. Come on, somebody. We've been in there, and everybody, you know, everybody's working hard. We want to look good. We want to feel good. And I tell you, it will make you feel good. I, I, I feel light today. Come on, somebody. I feel light today. You begin to feel good. But the thing about it is, is we don't like to do the basics. We want to get into a place, and we just want to see results. Walk into the gym, and we think all of a sudden things are going to change. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. Go into a locker room. You look in the mirror. It's about, I look skinny already. But the thing about it is, in order for you to cut down, in order for you to see results, you got to do some of the basics. Hello, somebody. Ain't nobody like to do jumping jacks. Ain't nobody like to do mountain climbers. Ain't nobody like to do high knees. Ain't nobody like to do any of those things. Because it begins to challenge you. And it begins to stretch you. And it begins not to just work on the outside, but it begins to work on the inside. You're breathing and what's inside of you. And a lot of times we don't like to do those things. We just want to see instant results. And this is not just for the third wave, the ones now, but even some of us that have been around a little while. Sometimes we want instant results. Well, I got news for you. In order for us to see results, we're going to have to work. We're going to have to put our hands back on the plow and begin to build, begin to plow, and begin to get back to some of those basic things that got us to where we are today. I don't know about you, but it was no heavy revelation and it was no uh, 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 powerful books and all these. It was the basic things that got me to where I am today. It was the basic thing that got you where you were today. And what is that? Simply just pray. Begin to let the word of God stir your heart. Begin to let the anointing of God fall upon your life. And then just begin to act on it. Just begin to move on it. So in order for us to break lids within our lives... We've got, to, uh, uh, we've got to be able to uh, take off the limits. We've got to begin to look at God in a whole other way. Number two is this. Let me move on. Breakthrough people know how to break out in faith. Breakthrough people know how to have a breakout faith. See, faith is, is a divine act. Faith is God in the soul. See, when you have been broken through some of the lids of your life, your faith begins to rise to another level because your dependency is not on God. Your dependency is on God and not on self. And many times we look to self because we get good. Look at your neighbor and just tell him you're good. No, look to him, tell him, say you're good. Because the reality is you are good. You're good. You're good at what you do. You're good looking. You're a good motivator. You're a good talker. Come on, somebody. Right? You're good at what you do. But the challenge is, is that we focus too much on how good we are and not how good God is. God is way better than you. God could take your life to a whole nother level. God could put a fresh spring in your step. And many times we focus on how good we are and we forget how good God is. See, anytime God expands your life, you're going to start praying more. And that's when your faith begins to rise. See, breakthrough people are praying people. And many times we get so good, we think we don't have to pray no more. We get so good, we know how to do things. We know how to speak, and we know how 
to teach and we know how to do ministry. And because we get too good, we feel that we don't got to pray no more. I got news for you. The better you get, the gooder you get, then the more you're going to have to pray. Because the more you pray, the more anointing is going to come upon your life, the more you're going to see powerful breakthrough in your ministry, in your family, in your church, and everything that you touch and do. See, breakthrough people know how to act in faith. See, with their, uh, where do these types of people get this faith? It is through prayer and the word. In other words, having an encounter with God. And we experienced that on Friday. There was a powerful encounter that we had with God on Wednesday. When our pastor spoke and, and, and it be just began to turn into a prayer service and God began to speak and things began to be broken off our life. That was an encounter with God. Some of you had an encounter with God and you walked away from that service like there is no limits on your life. That you're able to do whatever God has called you to do and be. And when that happens within your life, you start moving at a whole nother level. James 2.17 reads like this. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is, it is dead and useless. So in other words, what does that mean? Like I said, faith is active. In other words, if God, if you've gotten in a word and you've encountered a move of God within your life, you got to begin to start doing something. You got to begin to start stepping out and doing what God's called you to do and be. And don't let your complexes get in the way. Oh, I ain't as good as he is. Uh, I can't say it the way he says it. Oh, they're great on stage and they know how to do these certain things. Man, forget all that. If God put it in your heart, God has anointed you and God has filled you with the spirit, then I got news for you. You are able to do what God has called you to do. Come on, give the Lord some praise this morning. See, anytime faith is raised, it's because you've gotten a word. You've gotten a word. And that word begins to stir your faith. And then all of a sudden, we've got to begin to act on it. Because faith begins to lay hold of you. Faith is the power of God. Faith never fears. And faith moves even the things that cannot be moved. Faith moves the things that cannot even be moved. And there are some things that I believe as we begin to grow and step into new seasons within our lives, we need some things moved within our lives. And many of us, it may be the way we think, our mentality, our whole mind shift. Or hold the way we believe and the, and the way we think. I don't know about you, but man, I serve a big God. I serve a God that created the heavens and the earth. I serve a God that created the universe. I serve a God that put every single sand on the shore. I serve a God that put every single star in the universe. So you can't, you can't tell me that God is not able to do something powerful within your life. He saved you from the den of sin that you were in. He raised you up to make you somebody powerful in the community. So how dare us ever say that God cannot do something powerful within our life. God can do something powerful. God can raise us up and God can use you to make an impact all over the world. He can use you. He can change you. And he can blow your mind of doing things within your life. Some of you just said, oh man, all I wanted to do was get saved, get cleaned up. God don't just do small things. He does big things. You were a big deal. You are a big miracle. God's in the business of doing big things. I'll tell you why. Because he wants to raise up some big people for the kingdom of God. Give the Lord some praise here this morning. Come on. But Romans 1.17 says this. The just shall live by faith. See, maybe we are challenged with this. Because maybe... We are not living right. See, you cannot live by faith if you're unholy or dishonest. And many times this is where a lot of people struggle. Many times this is where a lot of people can't get a breakthrough because they're unholy or dishonest. See, breakthrough people learn how to do the right things. And we're raising up a church. We're raising up a ministry. We're raising up an army 
a people of God that will live righteously, that will live just, and that will live according to God's word. And as you begin to live according to God's word, you start experiencing breakthrough. And when you start experiencing breakthrough, you start doing things right. The hustling mentality begins to leave us. That scheming mentality begins to leave us. That mentality to try to get over begins to leave us because you're willing to pay the price and you're willing to sacrifice and you're willing to put in some hard work to do the right thing. And when that begins to happen within your life, you find your life going to new levels. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go to another level. I'm ready to experience the move of God. Our pastors are going to new levels. Our pastors are experiencing new levels. And I'll tell you this, man, I don't want to be left behind. I don't, I don't want to be the one looking back to, hey, pastor, wait up for me. Pastor, wait for me. I, I've struggled in this area, and I can't keep up with you. If anything, I've been hearing the messages. God has been speaking to my heart. Get some things right now. Get some things taken care of in your life right now so you can keep up for where God is taking our leaders in our church. See, God dwells in us, and we can have his defined power when we live and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. See, where God is taking our church, we have got to be able to walk in the spirit of the living God. We've got to be able to walk in the spirit of God because it is going to take an anointing to be able to do what God has called us to do and be. Give the Lord some praise. I'm almost done here today. The third and final point is this. What was the first one? The first one was is that breakthrough people know how to break out from lids. And breakthrough people know how to have breakout faith. But the third one is breakthrough, peop breakthrough people have breakout giving. Breakout giving. Now, this isn't a giving message as far as finances. Follow along with me. But we have experienced a breakthrough in giving in our finances when it came to the building. We've experienced breakthrough after breakthrough. We've experienced breakthrough when it comes to the area of giving. And people have experienced that. But look at what Luke 6, 37 says. It says, do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, or it will come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you full, pressed down, shaken together, make room for more, running over, and poured into your lap. Now watch this. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. See, giving is not only about money. It's about your heart. And you could put in this the context of princi the principle of sowing and reaping. And if you're going to be a breakthrough person for the kingdom of God, then our heart must be in the right place. And many times we struggle with obeying the word of God because our hearts are not where they need to be. Our hearts are not where we need to be. This word of God begins to give us instruction. This word of God begins to tell us how we ought to live. This word of God will tell you how to go through trials. This word of God will tell you how to serve him. This word of God will tell you how to treat your spouse. This word of God will tell you how to raise your children. This word of God will tell you how to build your business. This word of God will tell you how to walk with God, how to walk in a way that's going to be pleasing unto him. This word of God will instruct us the way we ought to live. But many times we will struggle with obeying the word of God because our hearts are not in the right place. And if you struggle with giving, you've got to question your heart. See, Jesus was all about giving. Matthew 5, 8 says, God bless those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. And I don't know about you, but I've learned that every single day, I've got to check this heart. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you. I don't know if some of you all be checking it once a week. Once a month. 
Maybe that's why sometimes it gets difficult and challenged. But the Bible says to put this flesh under subjection, beat this body daily. And I don't know about you, man, but I, I need to put this heart under subjection. I need to check this heart daily because this heart is deceitful and wicked and it cannot be trusted. Don't look at me like that. Some of you are looking at me like I got a good heart. Man, your heart ain't that good. Some of you are looking at me like, oh, I, I don't, I, I'm not that bad. You're bad. This ain't a rebuking message. I'm just bringing it up, you know, because I know my heart. If I don't check this heart, I know how bad I get. If I don't put this heart under subjection, I know how bad I can get. So let's just keep it real here for a moment. When you don't put your heart under subjection, you don't check your heart, you could be go all you could become all bad. You know where you come from. You know how you think. Come on, somebody. And because we don't put this heart in check, we start operating a certain way. But I came to let you know is that if we purify this heart and we put it under God's word and we let this word of God begin to cleanse us and we let this word of God begin to go through the depths of our soul, things change, things happen, breakthrough takes place. And when breakthrough takes place, all of a sudden you start breaking out of things. You ain't letting nothing hold you back. You ain't letting nothing stop you. You ain't letting nothing put you down anymore, but you're breaking out. That's when you can begin to have a breakthrough spirit. See, when your heart is pure, you don't have a problem giving of your time, your life, helping people, and even giving your money. See, God wants to get our hearts. But the reality of it is, it's true. The only way sometimes he can get to our hearts is really through our money. See how quiet it got right there? How would you feel if I just came and, hey, can I have your password to your bank account? Some of you are like, yeah, you can have it. There ain't nothing in there. <laughs> well, you just pulled your own covers because your bank account should be full. Because of what God has done in your life. So the thing about it is, is that it's true. So, yes, God is after our money because he wants to connect to your heart. And the scripture tells us that. What is Matthew 6, 21? Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. See, your heart follows your treasure. Your heart always follows your treasure. See, God knows what he was doing when he talked about your treasure and your heart. See, because your heart will always be connected to what you give to. Whether it's time or whether it's finances. What do you give your time to? What do you give your life to? And, when, when, and you'll always reap back whatever you give to. See, you will always go where you are invested. Wherever you are invested, you will always go. And understand, wherever you are invested, you cannot be moved from it. Wherever you are invested, you cannot be moved from it. And that even kind of goes for the negative. If you're so invested into sin, if you're so invested into the world, it's hard for you to get away from it. It's hard for you to be pulled away from it. That's why sometimes people struggle so much because you are so invested into it. You're so invested. And I remember when I got saved, man, I was so invested. I was loyal. I was loyal to the world. I was loyal to the drugs. I mean, you're like, whoa, where's he going with this? <laughs> I was loyal to it. That's right. I was loyal. I was faithful. I woke up in the morning speaking to the drug. I woke up in the morning ready to do it. I woke up in the morning. I was committed to it. I gave all my money to it. Come on, somebody. I gave all my time to it. I was even getting ready to throw my family away for it. I was committed and loyal to it. And that's why it took so much for, uh, for me to be pulled away from it. I remember those men of God would always come in the morning. Got a knock on my window. You know the story. I've told it before. 
And I would struggle because I was loyal to the world. I was loyal to that thing. And it was so hard because I was invested. But the moment the breakthrough happened, I began to break out of that thing. I began to break out of that loyalty and that commitment to that thing that was holding me down. And now I'm committed and loyal to the things of God. I'm invested here. So if I'm invested here, it's not going to be that easy to take me out of what I am invested into. And those are things that I think we've got to begin to ask our hearts. Are we invested? Because when you're invested, you'll experience breakthrough, and you're going to be able to break out of things that are holding you back. See, if we're going to be the people that God is calling us to be and do, then maybe it's time that we need to give our life again. Catch that. Give our life again. Luke 6.38, let me move on. Read, what did it say? It says the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. As they come to the keyboard. So the question I have for you is, what are you getting back? What are you getting back? See, the answer to that is, is what you get back always shows what you've given. You will always get back. It will always show what you've given. See, we've got to take an examination of our hearts. Because we need to be able to have a breakthrough spirit. At this next level, this next season, we're in the middle of the year. And how many of you are ready to go into the next half of this year stronger than what you came in the first half of the year? A few of you? I'll ask you again. How many of you are ready to finish this second half of the year stronger than what you came in the first half of the year? See how heavy that is? See how heavy that is? Because we started off strong and we started off doing things. But the thing about it is, is can you keep doing them? Same thing goes back to the gym. We like to start off good, but will we stay doing good? Will we stay doing good? Will we stay building? Will we stay disciple? Will we stay lifting? And the reality of it is, is God, as you begin to get stronger in the inside, you're able to do more. You're able to step out again. See, can we break out? Yes, we can. Can we have a breakthrough? Yes, we can. What did Isaiah 55 verse say? Let me read it to you one more time as we close. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Nor as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways. See, we need to stop doing things our way and start doing things God's way. See, 2019, what did we declare? It's right there every single week, every single service. A year to build. A year to build. How many of you still have a desire to build? I'll wait on you. How many of you have a desire to build? How many of you are ready to go back down the ladder again? How many of you are ready to come and, 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 and rebuild again? Rebuild those people and stir up your faith again. Get stronger again. Get good again. Stir it up again. Get strong again. I don't know about you, but I need to do it again. Because at new levels, it's going to require us to do it again. Do it again. See, for some of you, the year to build may mean this. Catch this. We're going to pray. We're going to come to the altar. For those of you that feel like, you know what, I need to come to the altar. But for some of you, this is what your year of building may be. It may be a bounce back year for you. It may be a breakthrough year for you. Or maybe it's a breakout year for you. I don't know about you. But I want to bounce back. I want to break through. I want to break out. 
I want all of them. I want all of them. Because God's called me to a big task. God's given us big leaders. God's given us a big vision. God's given us a big task here in our city. But also God has given us a big task all over the world. And if we would get a hold of this within our spirit, I believe we will experience revival. I believe we will experience breakthrough. I believe we will see limits come off of our lives. And we will see a whole, see us go to a whole nother level. But I believe that we must first learn to have that breakthrough spirit. Because when we have that breakthrough spirit, ain't nothing going to stop us. I don't know about you, but I feel like Iron Man right now. I know we got He-Man in the house. But I feel like Iron Man right now. I do. This morning I got in, I put that little thing on. I feel good. I feel great. I feel ready. Maybe it's because something's happening in my life personally. How about you? Do you feel great? Do you feel ready? Do you feel like you can back up your pastor? Do you feel like you can run with them? Do you feel like you can move with them? Do you feel like you can move with this leadership? Maybe, maybe you don't. You're like, man, this thing is, is, remember when he tried to put it in, it died out? Maybe that's how some of you feel because of things. It, maybe it, it's like, man, this thing, maybe you need to be recharged, refreshed, refueled. I don't know what, maybe you're feeling like that. Because we all get there. But I believe this. We're not an ordinary church. We're not an ordinary ministry. We are just not a storefront church or a storefront ministry. We are an international movement under leadership that moves in the power of the Holy Spirit. And just know this, we are a part of that DNA. We are a part of that anointing. We are a part of doing something powerful and great for the kingdom of God. And every one of us are a part of that. So here's what we're going to do. We say, you know what? I need a breakthrough. I need a breakout of something. As we sing this song, and we say, you know what? That's me. And I want you to come to this altar. And we're going to take a few moments just to talk to the Lord here today. If that's you here this morning, come on, get out of your seat. Don't matter if you're a leader. Don't matter if you're a life group leader. I surrender.